Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Mad Capper and this is another video on Raid Shadow Legends. First off, my face may seem a little bit brighter than normal. I have the blinds open just because it is 35 degrees Celsius, 95 degrees Fahrenheit here today in Saskatoon. And I'm going to make the best use of the sunlight as soon as I'm done recording this and get it uploaded. I know somebody who's got two thumbs and is hitting the deck with a nice cold one. But... First, it's time to make this video. I am late to the show only because I wasn't going to make a video. For those of you who do watch the channel, you know that I made a little satirical version of it. And I thought that would be the extent of my commentary. However, a lot of people are still asking, still wanting to know. For those of you who actually want to know my opinion on the latest, what's going on in Raid, serve this as the third time in my channel's history that other than through satire, I actually give commentary on goings on of the raid community the first time draco gate the second time the first big what's happening in raid shadow legends which i mark as the unofficial turning point of raid when they went from the old stale kind of our way is only the only way to um, our way is still the only way but we're gonna add more stuff so it kind of was a good shift in point and this being the third time the illustrious uh, should we call it speed gate um tos gate i don't know figure it out for those of you who just want to know the most important piece which is what's my opinion I'll give it to you right away for those of you who want to win the gems you got to stick with me for a little bit and for those who want a long-winded explanation well you know I love to speak in fact I've even given myself a timer I'm gonna run a clam boss because you guys know I love to ramble I'm gonna run a clam boss and uh, right now comment down below do you think the clam boss will finish first or me Leave your comments down below and we'll figure out which happens first. All right, here we go. We're gonna do this and then we're gonna, I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but uh, I know it's gonna win. I My bet, my money's on, on the clan boss finishing first, but uh, we'll see. So I got 50 turns to, to make this world happen. Okay, first off, the easy one. Speed hack bad, auto click good, advanced auto click bad, Auto tune or frame rate manipulation, good. There's my answers. There you go. That's what I have. Why do I think that? That's a little bit more complicated, but still fairly simple. It's what Plarium's told us. Uh, this is their game. This isn't against the law. There's no law for or against anything we're talking about today. There is no legal basis to say you cannot speed up or slow down a game that you are playing. However, the intellectual property within this game, including everything in your account, is owned by Plarium. Therefore, they have the right to set the terms of use, terms of service, as it is called, and those terms of service say no third-party apps. As a company, they have clarified what they will and will not tolerate as third-party apps through different means. Sometimes it's through patching, fixing, sometimes it's through actual saying look this is a violation you will be banned other times it's the exact opposite saying this is not something we will police or monitor they have come out again with very clear direction the speed modification of the source code engine rendering or cpu cycles in order to speed up your game artificially is something that they will not tolerate within their tos right to not allow third-party apps simple auto clickers to which they say specifically so long as there is a or they don't say so long but they say because it has a manual intervention piece to it is not something that they're looking to police it is important to note they do not say that they are allowing it they do not set a precedent to say oh we're going to allow it because that opens up a whole different book of uh bag of worms what they're saying is they're not actively policing against auto clickers i would personally be a little bit worried about some of those advanced auto clickers that do things like swap out food sell artifacts all these other things only because that adds a layer of automation that i am not sure that they are 100 percent comfortable with whether or not they can actually stop it is another story but nonetheless their game their rules we simply play them play by them as far as frame rate manipulation that is manipulating your computer not the game in any way shape or form the net result is speeded in the auto, auto artifact enhancement and perhaps that is something they want to look at. But from that perspective, I would consider that type of manipulation very similar to the clan manipulation that was used by many of the top clans last year that allowed them to clan hop and gather resources that most people had no even possibility of getting. 
while it is kind of against the spirit of the TOS, I don't think it's something that they're going to stop unless there's a way they can stop it from within the game. Frankly, I think most people who use uh, Riva Tuner, for example, to artificially manipulate their frame rate in order to speed up the artifact enhancement piece, gosh, at the end of the day, it burns resources and resources cost money. Free to play, it costs time. Uh, for those of you who don't aren't free to play, it costs time and or money. I don't think Plarium is worried about it. So that's that. That is why I believe that, because that's what it is. It's not because I'm a shill for the company. Though, frankly, we're all shills for the company. All creative co content users are. We put together stuff that you watch so that you are more apt to play the game, better understand the game, have more enjoyment in the game, and guess what happens? That causes more of you to spend, more of you to play longer, both of which benefit Plarium. So let's just get that out of the way. There is no Robin Hood of the creator content program. Every creator, every creator, whether it's one viewer or 100,000 viewers, benefits through a symbiotic relationship with Plarium. So do not think that any single one of these are the anti-Plarium. You're confusing yourself and you're being lied to by yourself, just so we're aware. As for the actual issue, which was the speed hack and the BGE video, which led to the suspension of BGE and Stu. Here is a short-winded, yeah, right, I'm already at 15 turns, short-winded TLDR of speed hacks how it affects games, how it affects this game, what I think of what happened with BG and Stu. First off, speed hacks have been around forever. I am actually a little bit embarrassed that I didn't notice it earlier when I first saw the speed hack mentioned in Mandible's Discord about a user not part of uh, Gods and Legends, uh, part of another clan that my understanding was also an employee. I don't know the, I don't know the full story, but they show that this person was a streamer. They thought they ended their stream, they turned on their auto battles and their speed hack, and they were running at, exp at a faster time, roughly twice the speed. This was almost a year ago. This happened. To my mind, I thought it was a manipulation of clock cycles in order to achieve this, but it's a basic speed hack tool that's everywhere. And I, again, I'm embarrassed that I didn't clue in because I am a veteran of Counter-Strike Source and Counter-Strike 1.6 where this was rampant. I mean, this, the, the fast speed hacks are obvious. The guy's a little running around and aimbotting everywhere. But to a smart hacker, which is an unfortunate thing that can happen, they actually have, if you take your speed and you go 1.1, it's very hard to notice when you're playing the game. But that extra speed to someone who's already talented in the game can be the difference between winning and losing. And the funny thing is, is I used to be competitive, though not good, not high-end competitive, but just competitive. We used to have a team and we came in fourth and actually were bumped up to third when one of the teams was banned because one of their users was actually using a speed hack to go just a nudge faster. So to me, it was dumb that I didn't figure out that, that's, that these were the same thing. So what a speed hack can do is there's very different ways to speed hack, but the end result is the same. It allows the computer to think that you're going faster than the, than the actual application thinks you're going, which means you effectively do things in half the time, though in the actual engine itself, it's running at what it thinks is normal speed. And this allows you to do things faster. Whatever that faster speed is, most you can manipulate yourself. Some are automated to two times in some applications, but in the Raid Shadow Legend ones, you can set that to whatever you want. Plarium's response back then was nothing vocal. They didn't tell anyone. They didn't tell the content creators. They didn't tell the people who had uh, who had reported this. They just silently put something in that if you ran it too fast, you would get kicked out and that run would not count if you did it too often. There was the risk that you would get banned. Now, I have seen screenshots of people being banned for re cheating. I don't know if that's directly related to this. There's no data that specifically says, oh, I guarantee you this is why, because of the speed hack. It could be for any other sort of manipulative tool that is trying to mess with the game. I did see another hack out there that had a whole bunch of other things it could supposedly do, like figure out shards in a way that you can manipulate your shard pulls. There was a bunch of different things I had heard about an older tool a year ago. So whether or not the speed hack is directly related to any bands, I have to say maybe, but I don't personally know. And I would think that unless Plarium comes out and says it, and with proof, which they never will, you can just assume that it's probably something on their list to ban, but whether or not they have, you don't know. With that said, do I think that speed hacks should be allowed in the game? Nope. Do I think that uh, auto clickers should be? Yep. 
for the same reason as I said before, TOS uh, and Playrooms allowing it, and that is what we are allowed to do. Now, on to Stu and BGE. So what happened in the last three, four days is BGE put out a video, which if you've watched this video from start to finish with an open mind and actually listening to what he's saying, there are a few things that have been whitewashed by either side, okay? Number one, BGE specifically stated he believes that this is not good for the game. He believes that it is a hack, and he showed it on an alternate account, an account that had been given to him. It wasn't his own account, because he felt that this is a bannable thing. He felt like this shouldn't be in the game. He said right from the start and throughout the video, look, this needs to be de dealt with. It shouldn't be in the game. In his mind, this was something new. He was scared about its potential and its results on ruining the game, and therefore he put the video out. What he did wrong, in my opinion, is he showed people specifically how to find and install the tool. That was where he crossed the line. And that was where most content creators, when he himself posted a link to it in the content creator chat, most, I'd say about 70% went down that line. Hey, look, glad you brought this to our attention. Some were like, mm, that's old. Others were like, wow, I never knew about this. But everyone pretty much was saying, hey, look, probably should take that down. You're a little bit too specific to which he was defending, and I think it's, he didn't understand. People were saying, look, revise the video. Just say, look, I, I, you guys don't don't use this. I'm sorry I gave you guys specific instructions, but I, I'm not gonna change how I feel about making it known to everyone, and that's fine. Those are the two sides of his story. Stu doubled down. He actually used it on stream <laughs> to show what the double speed can do. The result of this within 24 hours with both of them have been suspended for 30 days pending review. Actually, I should say suspended indefinitely with review after 30 days is actually more accurate. It didn't say there would be an automatic reinstatement to the content creator program after 30 days. What it said is they are suspended indefinitely pending review after 30 days as to whether or not they'll be allowed back in. They also then put a community post out that basically said these tools we do have a tool that sort of checks it, but it's not as fine-tuned because we're worried about unfairly banning people. Though they did talk about speeds that were legitimately faster, which made no sense to me because in-game times are irrelevant. It's the in-game versus the external game that's relevant. So maybe an old computer or, or other reasons, I got a lot of programs going on, might, might manipulate the data. But we're not talking 30% faster in campaigns where it could go from 9 seconds to 7 seconds. We're talking clan boss runs, 35 turns, dear God. Clan boss runs, which are 20 minutes, that could go down to 10 minutes. That's a very significant difference. Even if they did it at 1.5 speed, it's still a significant timestamp that you could actually look for. That said, they put it out said, hey, look, we're, we're developing this tool. We've been developing it. We're going to look at going further with it expect to be banned if you were using this and just so you know if you have been using it and you think that you're going to use it up until we say hey the tool's ready which we're not going to do you will be banned there's where we are uh do i think Stu and bg should have been suspended yes uh, i do support both of them i like their content i love i mean i'm in Stu's twitch stream pretty much every day but it was a break of our terms of service in the content creator program. It specifically says not to do this, not to uh, willfully engage in harmful practices such as cheating or hacking and show it to the GQ public. So frankly, um, that is a consequence that you're gonna get. Whether you think you are doing it for the greater good or not, it specifically stated the, the consequence of doing such things and it's been hit. Uh, do I appreciate BGE's intent and Stu's, uh, uh, you know, I guess, uh, I'm trying to think of tenacity or what, I don't even know the word I'm looking for. The fact that he went as far as he did, I do appreciate that because what it did is it forced Plarium's hand. And I have found time and time again that unless you force their hand, they don't do things. Now, some content creators argue that that is not our responsibility. But if it is our responsibility to weigh judgment on BGE and Stu, which many have, then it's also our our responsibility or or want, right, to pass judgment on Plarium. And I think Plarium needs to address these sort of things sooner rather than later. They ruin the game, and that's that's not good for them. It's not good for their bottom line. It's not good for us. So there we are in that. 
I do want to put one last thing out. First off, this affects 0.1% of the entire gaming population. Now you may be saying, but, but Capper, speed hacks are going to ruin everyone's game. They're not. Uh, oh, they're going to ruin tournaments. They're not. The number one deciding factor in tournaments is still money. Now, if two people with the same amount of money go head to head, yes, one will win, one will lose. 100% based on a speed hack. For example, let's take Murder and Stu. They both have we'll say unlimited resources. They both have as much money as they want to spend in the game. That may be zero, that may be a million dollars, none of our business, but they don't seem to have any qualms about putting money when they want to. If they were going after say Draco, which is the current uh, top three prize in global, one's using the speed hack, the other isn't. So with all other factors equal, if Murder was using the speed hack and Stu wasn't, Murder's gonna win because they have the same energy, the same resources, similar computers. The only difference is the ability for one to do it faster. That said, how many people are actually vying for global prizes? Tournaments within the smaller computer, Fane? Fane is not so big a deal for anyone who can afford to win their group, in most cases, that a speed hack would make any difference. Now, there are exceptions to this, but at the end of the day, 99% of tournament rewards are minuscule. They're meaningless. They're a drop in the bucket. They wouldn't cause any change. That doesn't mean I think that the speed hack should be allowed or ignored. I'm simply saying the faint indignation that a lot of people are giving about these veracity of these cheaters and how it's ruining the game is ridiculous because for 99.9% .9 of you, it's irrelevant 99.999% of the time. Also, do not be dissuaded by content creators. We fool you. We lie to you. We make you think it's important because guess what? That's what sells views and views make us money. I don't make a lot of money on my channel, but I make enough that I can spend a little bit of money each month in Raid Shadow Legends and the money I make on Twitch and on uh, YouTube directly goes into a coffer that I use to spend every month on this game. Without it, I would not be able to do as much content. So definitely I want more views. And I am a small fly in the, in the vast Plarium uh, Raid Shadow Legends community. Think of the larger community people, such as Hell Hades. It won, so over under. I'm over, it's under. Son of a gun! Anyway, the point being is, look, there are going to be videos out there telling you how this is a tragedy and how it's awful and can you believe it? Don't buy the hype. Either side, don't care. Don't buy the hype. Don't go because, you know, there's opposing, you know, opposing opinions between, say, BG and Murder Inc. Don't pick sides. Don't care. Both of them are doing what they do best. They are making content that's going to get them views. Outside of that, you they do not need your help. They do not need you to go to BGE and go, you're a jerk for calling them this. And they don't need BGE's fans to go over to murder and go, you're a troll for doing this. <laughs> it's feigned ind indignation, everybody. It's, it's all about getting and garnering views and God bless them both. I love them both. I've been a part of Murder's community since I think I might be his second or third oldest sub. So 100%, but I still say do not get fooled. Do not get rolled into this craziness. You can have an opinion, sure. You can share your opinion, but don't think you need to white knight for either side. It's irrelevant. At the end of the day, the only who opinion that matters on this is Plarium. They will decide what and how to do what they need to do in both fixing the problem acknowledging the problem and dealing with both uh, all content creators in general and what you do and say to either of them is probably irrelevant because you'll not only ostracize yourself from one side or the other but you'll probably galvanize the other side you should learn that look at american politics look at well look at world politics look at every sort of divisive conversation in the world you can never change someone's mind by yelling at the opposition it doesn't work what it does do is create great views for all the rest of us who are content creators. And guess what? We are all shills for Plarium. If Plarium, like I said earlier, does well, so do we. If they make money, more of you watch our content. If more of you watch our content, we make more money. We make more content, which helps Plarium promote their product. It is a symbiotic relationship by which both of us profit from the other's profit. Keep that in mind next time you're watching a video that has this crazy next, whatever the next thing will be, whatever the next hype will be. Just keep that in mind, okay? Now, 
here we are to the point of giving away those five 540 gems. I'm going to give all five away because YouTube last month I didn't give any away on YouTube. I did it all on Twitch. This time we're going 100% YouTube. Five winners will win 540 gems. I will draw them live on my Sunday Twitch stream. You do not have to be there. You just have to do this. Leave your UM code after your comment or before. I guess it doesn't really matter. Before or after your comment down below. I will say leave a comment then the UM code only because sometimes it uh, flags as a hold for review because it thinks it's spam. So if you do it after, it seems to not do that. But put your UM code, the full UM code. I will draw five of you and five of you shortly thereafter, usually on the Monday or Tuesday, we'll get 540 gems. As review, you can get your UM code right here. Player profile, info, there it is. Player ID, UM, blah, 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 hash, blah, 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 blah. Do not worry, this is just an identifier so that Plarium can give you the gems directly to your account. It does not in any way, shape, or form allow anyone... Here, I'm showing it here. No one's hacked me. I show it every month, so do not worry about sharing this ID with anyone. It's going to do no one any good but Plarium to give you gems. That's all I have for you. Thank you very much. By the way, for those of you who made it this far, you're probably actually fans of the channel. Let me give you some information. I did take the week off from creating videos until today because I needed some R&R &R and I am changing my stream and my channel up in my schedule. I was getting burnout. I had to do this. Uh, it was getting to the point where I might have quit doing content altogether, but I enjoy it too much. So I will no longer be streaming Saturdays. I will be streaming Friday nights as always and Sundays as always. And I'm going to add Monday to the mix. There will be subject to change based on my actual real life six figure job that allows me to do all this other stuff. So sometimes I have to go away on work. Those days obviously I wouldn't be able to stream, but Mondays and Fridays are the most consistent times I am in town. That gives me Saturday off during the summer to recharge and relax. No videos, no Twitch, no raid. Just enough to do my dailies and move on. So uh, for those of you who are looking for me, you will see me starting next week. I will, I'll be this Friday, this Sunday, then Monday. So going forward, that's how we will be doing it. I will come back with a new this week in free to play. I have some cool new stuff there. And of course, I will be doing one more video, which will drop today is Thursday. So uh, Saturday, I'll be dropping a video on my final of the top fives. And then we will be going back to making some new I built them so you don't have to. I have a bunch of champions ready to go. So we're going to be starting making videos once again. I built them so you don't have to starting next week. Thank you all for making it this far. Sorry that the uh, clan boss thoroughly beat me. But I hope you have a wonderful day. Please be kind. Stay safe. Enjoy like me the 95. I'm sweating my face off here with the lights and the actual heat. Uh, but I love every minute of it. See you in the next video.